This is Eat, Sleep, Invest, the marketing podcast for real estate investors to get more deals. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Eat, Sleep, and Invest. I'm your host, Brian Driscoll. I'm here with Dennis Yu. What's going on, Dennis? What's up, Mr. Brian? I love that yellow shirt. Ah, thanks, man. Pittsburgh colors. (laughs) I've been following you for a while. You've been around the digital marketing space for a long time. How long have you been doing? Give us a little Uh, background on what you do. I built my first website over 30 years ago, and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. I was one of the early people at Yahoo, and I built the analytics. And as a search engine engineer, my job was to protect the search results from all the people that were trying to trick us. So I've learned a lot about SEO from the standpoint of being at the search engine. And social media came along and we had the chance to buy Facebook and we didn't because Zuckerberg didn't show up to the meeting that I, we worked all night preparing the analysis and all that. He didn't show up to the meeting. But I later left Yahoo and I was one of the first people to advertise on Facebook. And we spent a billion dollars on Facebook ads. And I discovered that shift from text into pictures, into video, into the short form, TikTok-y sorts of things, there's been this progression of content that's more authentic. And I'm happy to announce that I have the number one best-selling book on Amazon and social media, and it's on TikTok. And who would have thought like this Asian search engine engineer who didn't speak English until he was six would have the top book in social media. Like I can't, I don't sing and dance. I'm not an attractive woman or I don't do any of those kinds of things, but here we are. And so I've been a data-driven systems engineer. Like this is what you get when an engineer thinks about marketing, right? I'm not a marketer, but I'm an engineer. So I'm systematizing, I'm trying to understand what's working. And I found some really cool patterns that work for real estate investors and work for anyone who's in a service-based business. And it's not a secret, and I'm happy to share everything I know. Yeah, and that's interesting that you bring that up too with having an engineer background, because most marketers, we're looking at data, things like that, but like, I don't think like an engineer. I know a lot of guys don't. We, we, it's just a different personality type and how you analyze data. I see other people that are really good at, at getting deals. They're really good at relationships. They're really good at the thing they're good at. And I just like to stick with the thing I'm good at, which is analyzing data and finding the thing that works and trying to get more out of the thing that's working. That's what we call optimization, right? Okay, so say say we got some people trying to go out and get deals. We're, we're talking about Facebook here. Like, uh-huh. What types of content, what types of things are you seeing that people should be doing or what are you seeing that people should be staying away from? Okay, let me try to answer this in a way that has lasting value. Okay, so Brian, when you are... You're goofing off at night and you're watching Netflix, right? You're watching some kind of movie or TV show. How good are those recommendations? People who like, what's something you like to watch? What's a movie or show or something you watch? Yeah, I was just watching on HBO the, um, uh, what was it? It was the uh, Game of Thrones prequel. Game of Thrones. Okay, great. So if you're watching Game of Thrones, how well can Netflix or Hulu or these other guys make a recommendation of what else you might like? I was thinking this the other day. They're like spot on. They're right on. And how about when you're on TikTok and you watch something? Like I happen to love, I I have a thing for magic tricks because I just find it fascinating. So I watch one magic trick and all of a sudden it's like, it's reading my mind and it knows what else I like. So it's showing me other magic tricks by other people. And pretty soon I've just lost two hours, right? A hundred percent. And let's say, what's something, Brian, that you bought on Amazon recently? On Amazon, uh, I bought some uh, air fill, air cleaners. Air cleaners, okay. So when you buy an air cleaner, it says, well, people bought this, they also bought this, and then pretty soon you start adding other stuff to your cart, right? Right. Very good, very good at doing that. So that's called a collaborative filter. So the math behind that is a lookalike audience. It's the same algorithm that determines the Facebook news feed as Amazon, Spotify's playlists, TikTok, all of them are exactly the same because whatever you are consuming, whatever you're doing, without going into the math of reverse Bayesian filters and things like that, what it's doing is trying to find other things that are very similar to that thing. So how does that apply to getting more deals? Well, if you are putting out short little videos about the deals that you have done already, and you're, you're making videos with other people showing like, this is where I'm trying to do deals in Portland, Oregon, and I'm doing deals with so-and-so, and here's the other people that are that we're syndicating with and here's you know 
the more you're putting out there, and this is not one of those woo woo, whatever you put into the universe, you're going to manifest kind of things. But when you put that out there on Facebook and TikTok and even YouTube, the system's learning and it, that will attract more people. The system will actively find other people that fit that criteria better than you ever could with targeting because the system is smarter. The system has more data than you. That's the way to think about it. Now, are you see, you're seeing a lot more engagement and uh, better results with videos than still images? Videos contain more information. There's motion often that's involved. There's words that are being said. There's a vibe. There's a story being told. It's just way richer. It's like a picture's a thousand words, a video's a thousand pictures. And video allows for more engagement. There's more stats associated with the video because the network, whether it's TikTok or YouTube or whatever, they're looking at who's engaging. They're looking at how long people are watching. They're pulling in data like, are they stopping and rewinding on a certain part? And that sends another signal because then it's like, huh, Brian is talking about multifamily homes in Dallas, Texas that are 500 doors or more. Who else would be, who else is talking about stuff like that? Who else would be interested? And so the system's going to start showing you once it learns it's going to start showing you to people that are like that. It's doing your networking for you. But if you don't put that content out there, there's nothing for the system to work with. And that's why most real estate investors suck so bad because they blame the algorithm or they think social media is irrelevant. You have not fed the system what it needs to be able to help you. Yeah, and that's so true too. What do you what do you say to all the guys that just don't, they're like, oh, I got to get professional videos and or I just don't even want to be on camera, like all that kind of stuff. I don't want to be on camera. I have a face made for radio. I didn't even speak English <laughs> until I was six. I don't like how my voice sounds. I don't have any hair. I'd rather other people talk. I just avoid the camera. But I've learned that if I don't do this, then I'm not going to get what I want. And I've learned that it's even though I don't want to be the face and I don't want to be like some douchebag talking about myself and how successful I am. I find that it's actually better to make videos when you are edifying other people. So I was at my friend Daryl Isaac's house last week in Florida, and I was enjoying hanging out with him. And he's got a boat and all these sorts of nice things that people who have made it have. And I made a couple of videos about how grateful I was. And it wasn't about me, but it was about honoring other people. A friend of mine just hit 2 million subscribers on YouTube and we ate some cake together and I was honoring him. And it wasn't about me. And, you know, he caked me, which I thought's awesome. And so we shared that. And I just thought, what a cool moment. And so I'm sharing these moments, honoring other people, usually people that I'm doing deals with. And so now the algorithm is noticing that. And I'm getting more deals in different areas based on what I want because the system's feeding it to me because those people are seeing my posts, they're engaging on it, they're reaching out, saying, hey, we. We, I didn't know that you did this one thing. We really need to get together. Can we? In fact, I'm having lunch with a friend of mine in an hour and a half because he saw something that I posted on Facebook. See, the algorithm is getting really smart, but it depends on what you put in there. Yeah, it is scary you know, how smart they are. Here, here, here's what you need. This is your video camera. It's called an iPhone. This is the iPhone 14, which has a better camera. I, look, people will argue about iPhones being overpriced and all that. If you care about business, it's a fact. The videos that are made on an iPhone, I don't care how much you hate Steve Jobs and whatever it is, the, 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 this is the engineer speaking. The videos that are made on an iPhone perform better. Who knows why? They just perform better, okay? I'm, I'm with you there. And I, I, I see a lot, of, a lot of the videos too, like people are talking about, um, some people I do will do uh, professional videos for ads. And I see the guys doing them on their cell phone too. I think you're a lot more relatable, like a real person too, versus getting all... Real professional looking professional like Professional videos don't convert. It's a fact. We, we've gone head to head where there's an agency that will spend $50,000 on a camera shoot where they bring out the red cameras and people that have won different kinds of awards for cinematography. They have all the gear. It's intimidating, okay? Have you, Brian, have you been on TV? Yeah. So what's that like when they put the thing in your ear and th there's the headset and there's all the lights that are shining on you and you feel the pressure? How likely are you to be able to behave naturally in a studio environment like that with a big thing in your face and the big light shining in your eye versus I, just like a walk and talk video on your cell phone? Yeah, yeah and you're right too with those. It's so awkward because then, then you get your nerves going and different things like that versus yeah, on your work. cell phone. 
And we, I noticed too with your cell phone, you can take as many videos as you want to get natural. It's just you there. Yeah, and if your video sucks, restart. It's just that you're just making a 15 second video. Right. Another thing I heard people say in the past too is even in the beginning, just make them because no one's watching. Even if they suck, yeah. no one's watching them in the yeah, beginning. Your first hundred videos are going to suck, so you want to get past the suck as fast as you can. Right, yeah. Okay, cool. So everyone needs to get out there and make 15 second videos starting now. Now, but they won't. how do you. How do you test them? Like, how, how do you know which ones are working and which ones aren't without like blowing thousands and thousands on them? Easy. You post them. I can let you want me to show you here. Yeah, sure. So name any sort of name a place. Uh, Dallas, Texas. Dallas. All right. So I'm playing mini golf on the roof in Dallas. And uh, there's this bridge thing here. There I'm at the go high level offices giving a tour, my buddy Michael Taggart who spends $100 million on Google ads a year. There's my boarding passes on Southwest of Dallas. Oh, I'm with Tom Ferry. You know who Tom Ferry is? Yeah. Okay. So this stuff is all automatically being tagged. And this is a selfie. And you could see that it was on an, uh, an iPhone 11 and it's here in Dallas at Tom Ferry's office. This is before I was on his podcast. So this, there's lots and lots of little snippets here. Can you see this? Like here's the full podcast, 16 minutes. Mm -hmm. Here's these, these other angles. Here's kind of like behind the scenes stuff. But if I have all this, let me ask a question just from a comprehension standpoint, just to see like, if, is my stuff making sense? So there actually is a podcast here. This is the actual podcast. Yeah. Right. I really had a wonderful time buying my first house, yeah. selling my first time, you know, with using the Dennis keywords you, you, yeah. you with me, it's yeah. gotta be the keywords. Okay. So there's all the stuff when we're talking about SEO and digital marketing and all that kind of stuff with Tom Ferry, right? This is the professional right. one. This is the one. If we go to first YouTube, and last name, the we go to YouTube, we can see the action that they took in this. There's all these people that are talking about it. Right. And they've been saying it's really, really good. Okay. This is in Dallas. So, Brian, if I've got this video already, why would I want to collect stuff like this? This is obviously unprofessional, isn't it? Look, I'm wearing gym shorts. It's, you know, not shot professionally. Like, why, right. why would I do that? You tell me. What, what do you, why do you think? I think uh, social. To, to, I think that kind of stuff makes you look like a real person. And you can share it with people. Yes, and they can, they exactly. Can feel like, like they could be, they could be buddies with you. Yeah. So I'm trying to look as real as possible. So here's like shaky motion, right? Cause it's not on a stand a tripod. It's like my buddy Mark who's holding it with his hands. So it's not exactly all that stable, right? Yeah. Now I've run ads against this, all different sorts of things, vertical, horizontal pictures, you know, us getting coffee before we start. Here's like some behind the scenes stuff where, oh, there's Jason Pantana. Oh, we're look. here in Tom Ferry's office. And you can see like this thing's propped up on a bunch of books. How unprofessional. See, look. With Tristan, our videographer, Ruby. And so they're coming on this journey with us. Now, let me ask you, Brian, when I've promoted things like this with ads or tested it, what do you think is performing better? The professional Tom Ferry, you know, fancy camera thing or the unprofessional, what, what do you think gets a higher click-through rate, gets higher engagement? Stuff like unprofessional this? Unprofessional one. Yeah, the natural looking. Uh, yeah, isn't that interesting? But then why, why is that? Because, I mean, you want to be all professional and you want to use the fancy cameras and you want to do all that, right? Like, why, why would we show stuff like this? Uh, it kind of matches the social profiles. I mean, the social platforms, what people are looking for, right? Yeah. So if I go to TikTok, and look, I'm, I'm making these selfie videos with other people because it's recognizing who these people are. But let's say, you know, real estate investor, city name or whatever. There's all these people that are, look at what kinds of videos are showing. Like what, do you see like what this is going on? Or what, these are yeah. all vertical selfie, cell phone style videos, right? Right. Walk and talk kind of videos. See this? And some of these, what is this? 1.8 million. Wow. 3.4 million. What is this girl doing? Let's see. Hi, I'd like to buy this house, please. Uh, this is a $500,000 house. Do you have your parents to help you? No, nope. I've been working my job for three years. I make $4,000 a month and I've got the 3% down payment ready to go. So can I... 
3.4 million. Now, do you think if she did this in this professional webinar, whatever fancy camera way, she shot this on, on an iPhone probably, and she just green screened it to put a picture of a house in the background. How professional do you think this thing was? Right, yeah. You see what's going on here? POV, you become a real estate investor at 26 or whatever, and she's showing her butt or whatever. Like, okay, well, I don't know what that has to do with like showing your butt at the gym or whatever it is, but fine. It's yeah. working, okay? And, it and all, you're right, because that is how everything's transitioning too. People want to see real, it's all the selfie kind of stuff. It's right, you, people just taking them right on their phone. Look, this one got 1.3 million. So this person was at some sort of get together of other investors. Mark, Look at what they uh, did. How much you, you did last month? Bro. Boom, Darren. How much you do last month, Darren? One point two million. Boom, Mike Fitz. How much you did? Commercial building worth 2.7 million a day for 115 and I make 40,0. Boom! Okay, Our now God. that's that's super professional, isn't it? Yeah, it's funny. I know the I know the guy was in the middle there, Darren. Okay. Yeah, okay. So now if you're on TikTok and Brian and, and you see this and you see Darren's in the middle there, you're probably gonna follow whoever this other guy is and, and you're gonna engage and maybe comment and now the algorithm notices that you stopped in, on that one guy because you know who it is, right? right. What's the algorithm going to do once it notices that you recognize who that guy is? Show you more. Oh, okay. So then if you want to get more deals, if you want to network with Darren and be a part of his deal flow and whatnot, how, how does this fit in with what we're doing? Yeah, like glove. Yeah. So now let's go to Facebook, okay? And let's say, actually, I was just on this one with Grant Cardone, right? Look at, look at this here. That's one minute tip. Look. Hey guys, Dennis wanted me to send you this. Uh, one best one minute tip. Bro, you got to be. You got to make one minute videos. You gotta right. Get... That right. dude you're working with, oh, oh, De Dennis, you. He's a bad, bad man. You see what I do? I keep getting your attention. He's a bad, bad man. And you could see I posted this on Facebook, and a lot of people are viewing it and engaging on it. Right. Right. Because who is. So Facebook, right? I posted this on Facebook. 100,000 people saw this. So who is, who is Facebook going to show this video to? They're going to show it to people that know you, number one. Yeah. And who else? This video. All their people that engage with it and then probably their friends. And Grant Cardone, right? Well, yeah, and Grant Cardone, yeah. You're going to show it to Grant Cardone. So the engagement rate on this is super high because... Instead of me teaching, hey, you got to make one-minute videos. If you're in real estate and you don't make one-minute videos, then the algorithm can't learn based on your relationships and blah, blah, blah. But I don't even need to do that because what, what's better, Brian? Me say, me teaching this stuff or having Grant Cardone say this? Hey, guys, Dennis wanted me to send you uh, that. Way better having other people say good stuff about you. Yeah, so that's the whole thing. Yeah. It's all based, based on your reputation. Your reputation is what other people have to say about you. Who cares what I have to say about myself? Anyone that's watching this is probably thinking like, who's this other like bald Asian guy that Brian's talking to? Is he any, is he credible? Like, should I listen to him? Is this worth my time? Yeah. And you're right too. We've seen really good success, even with testimonials, people that you, people that you just bought their house from, put them on talking about you. And those get way better engagement than me saying, Hey, I'm Brian, I'm in Pittsburgh and I buy houses. So the one minute video is largely you creating content with other people, not just you talking about yourself and how awesome you are, but when you're edifying other people. So yeah. a testimonial, of course, you never would call it a testimonial. You'd call it a success story because then right. it's about them. A testimonial is all about you. You never make it about you because that's pompous. Yeah, right. A lot, lot of stuff going on in there. Yeah. It, it's a deep psychological principle. It is. Yeah, I like that. And I think, I think a lot of people, I'm glad you gave that explanation too and showed the visuals because I think a lot of people, even that aren't super tech savvy, can see that and it would make sense. Well, look, I live and breathe this. This is not like I had this one win 10 years ago and now I'm just surfing on. I had a big win 20 some years ago that I re basically could retire on. But I, you know, I don't want to retire because you can only eat so much pizza and play golf or whatever. But let me show you another one just to show you that, that this is something that, that I live and breathe. And it's not just because other people say, well, Dennis is doing it because he's, it works for Dennis because he knows a bunch of celebrities or he's super successful or whatever. It, no, anyone can do this. You do, you do not have to have a huge network to be able to do this. Let's go back here choose a you chose dallas before yeah we just randomly went to dallas it could have been anything choose an mm, an activity or a thing uh mountain biking i love mountain biking yeah, me too so i was just in park city 
as you can see, a few weeks ago. Right. And the colors are changing because, you know, it's October. Now we're in November. And my buddy Bob, who I've known for 10 plus years, we've done a bunch of deals together. And we're not talking about business at all. We're just having a good time, right? Doing mountain biking. Right. And my buddy Mark and I were doing some, well, he's on a mountain bike. We're in Phoenix. Oh, I, I did this mountain biking trip. This was, I know this photo was uploaded in 2017, but this was over 30 years ago. This is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. And we biked 500 miles all the way down from the Golden Gate Bridge down to LA on our mountain wow. bikes. Wow. Five days, 100 miles a day, camped at the end of each night. But these memories are automatically being collected. And this is what Google is thinking about this. Uh, name name a, like a food or an object or something, a noun. A noun. Let's say um, spaghetti. Spaghetti. All right. Is this spaghetti? Looks kind of like spaghetti. Is that hey, spaghetti? Spaghetti noodles. Close enough. It's like fettuccine. Is this spaghetti? Uh, it's Asian noodles. Not quite spaghetti, but okay. This looks like spaghetti. No, that's not spaghetti. That's a um, Mongolian grill. It's spaghetti noodles. Like this is spaghetti. Okay, this is spaghetti. All right. And where was this? Oh, this is in, in um, Plymouth, Minnesota. In seven years ago. So Google automatically has all these different things. So whatever you want to do, whatever you want to talk about, whatever, it's got all this. So you can take you, your moments and your life moments are already being captured, right? Right. And, and plus with people. So I don't have time to mess around. So with categorizing. So everything's automatically being categorized. So my buddy Gavin Lear and I, we were in Louisville, Kentucky last week. And we were at a University of Kentucky game. And so the AI is automatically capturing these pieces, right? I don't think people quite understand that. The AI, I'm not doing any tagging. This is coming straight off my phone. The system's doing everything. But because it sees what we're doing, it's the, the AI makes it easy for my virtual assistants to come in. I have an army of them to be able to categorize all my content by what I'm talking about and who it's with. You see that? It's automatically being done. Yeah. So my whole content marketing and whatever you want to call it, it's automatically being done for me because Brian, all I'm doing is in stage one, I'm producing the content. The other three stages are all being done by other people. They're processing the content using these different tools. It's automatically being categorized by Google. It's being published to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, blogs, whatever, and then being boosted for a dollar a day. So I'm in phase one, the virtual assistants and the rest of the system are handling everything else here. And I think this is what most people don't understand about marketing. Even if you're a, a one person real estate investor, you need to have a team around you. And you've heard all the stuff about, you know, having a team. So that's, that's how you build a marketing machine around yourself. Yeah, that's pretty solid. And anybody listening to this on audio also, uh, go check out the YouTube version because Dennis is showing all kinds of different things on it that all the data that it's capturing on the back end of images, videos, things like that, showing where they were. So the visuals will definitely help on this episode. That's really interesting. And I don't think a lot of people realize how much data, even just from one photo, oh yeah, that Google and all these different all these different uh, tech companies have just from that yeah. one thing. They know tons of information just from one picture. Yeah. And why not let the, you know, the AI is so powerful. You can argue about like whether AI is eating the world or that some evil dictator is going to use AI to kill us all. But the, the beauty is like it's on your phone. You're using Google every day. Like you're using Google to do your mail or figure out where the restaurant is. Or like why not let the AI that's super smart just do your marketing for you? Right. hundred percent. Why, why are people messing around trying to do their own marketing? Yeah. And you know what? Too? Yeah. Someone told me that a long time ago too, because we can't even think, we can't even comprehend the level of the data that they are putting together. It's insane. Let them do what they do and give them the, give the uh, algorithms all the information and let them do what they do best. That's right. So you feed the algorithm and then you still need some other software and some process to tie it all together. Because, you know, Google and Facebook and TikTok are kind of enemies of each other because for various reasons. So you have to have a process 
to be able to move data from one place to the other. So there's some tools to do that. And then you need a virtual assistant or two, like someone in the Philippines for $500 a month to basically operate all this for you to like log into your Google photos each day, see what you're doing, yeah, turn that into your social media posts and all that kind of stuff. And they're not, they're not a social media manager. They're not like coming up with new things to say. They're just taking what you've already said. They're looking at the relationships that you already have. Like, oh, this is the third time Dennis has been with Tom Ferry. That looks like it must be something important. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and they're talking about TikTok now. Okay. Well, I'm going to take what they've already said, chop it up into different pieces, put it on, on Facebook and TikTok, turn it into a blog post. So the, these assistants or helpers are not putting words in your mouth because I don't, I never want anyone to try to speak as me because they're going to get it wrong. They don't have the knowledge. They don't know the relationships, but I'm totally okay with someone in a third world country taking my content, chopping it up according to the training that we have on how to do that, and then pushing it to YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn and all that. Yeah. Now, how do you, what's, how do you find the right people to do that? Like to hire? Well, they self-qualify. So let me show you. Okay. We have these different groups where we're training people. Here's one of them. It's called Digital Marketing with Dennis Yu. And there's 28,000 people in this group that are all learning. And so they're going through our training, getting certified. And you can see like here, hey, we need two VAs who can do this. And people are applying, right? Someone else yesterday said, hey, I've known Dennis Yu for a long time. He's really good. This guy's in Kosovo. He's... You wouldn't know he's in Kosovo, but he's really good at Google ads. And he's gone through our training on that. This person, hey, I need, I need an SEO person. Okay. And all these people are applying, but anyone who's applying, they have to go through our training, right? So here's one. Hey, I can rank on your name. How awesome would it be to rank on Brian Driscoll? Well, we know how to do that, right? And here's the training on how to do that. We have training on everything that we do. So these VAs, these virtual assistants are coming in. And they're learning how to do these things. We're not just hiring them. They have to go through our training. So what we do is we give them access to this academy, which has got 120 courses in it. They learn how to edit a 15-second video. They learn how to set up a chat bot. Learn how to do ads. They learn how to build courses. We have a course on how to build courses. We've made so many courses, right? Here, they learn how to set up digital plumbing, which is how to get all the tracking in place across your website and social media and your email and all that. You can see 300 people have taken this course. And there's all these different modules here, right? Like, why not, right? Right. So, you know, like a doctor, you, you wouldn't allow someone who's like, well, I just would like to be a doctor. No, you have to go to medical school or you want to be a pilot. I flew back last night from Phoenix to Vegas. So when you're on a, on a flight, Brian, are you worried about whether the plane's going to crash or whether the pilot's qualified or whatever? No, I'm, I'm just, I'm in. Like you're you're in because in. you know that the airline, even if it's freaking Spirit or Frontier, like I don't like to fly them, but even the, the crappy airlines, you know that the pilots had to go to pilot school, the flight academy, right? Right. So if, if you're hiring a virtual assistant or an agency or a marketing person or a consultant or whatever to work on your marketing, they need to be certified, just like a doctor or a lawyer or a pilot or, you know, they, they need to. And that's why we put all this training out there. We put it out there with Tom Ferry or with digital marketer or whoever the other organizations are, we put out, we, we put out all, all the training on how to do this. And so we think that when you have a clear standard, there's no voodoo or witchcraft. It's all very clear. Yeah. That, that's pretty interesting stuff there. A lot to, lot to take in. I think a lot of people will get something from this episode. Hey, yeah. let me ask you this. If anyone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way to connect and what can you help people with? They can use whatever their favorite channel is. So just Google me. I like LinkedIn. But you can see we're openly teaching everything that we know how to do. And my life vision, mission, is to create a million jobs. Very fortunately, we're a quarter of the way there, largely through the Philippines. And I know the more successful business owners are in being able to scale, the more jobs we're going to create because they're going to hire virtual assistants from the Philippines, from Pakistan, from Kosovo, from Brazil, all these other places that we do training programs. So every two months... I fly internationally to do these training programs and set up schools and programs with different governments. So we're not political, but we work with a lot of governments to be able to create training. And the governments, of course, they like this because they know we're creating jobs for them. We do webinars together with Fiverr. Fiverr is the world's largest freelancing community. They have six and a half million freelancers. And it's a pleasure. It's an absolute joy to be able to work with these other organizations to create jobs because for every American, 
that is growing for every American that we're able to hire, that's another five folks in the Philippines or whatever that create jobs, right? So it's not that we're losing jobs offshore, it's that the more our businesses in America grow, the more people we're able to hire over on the other side. So we're, we're constantly trying to balance both sides. Yeah, that, that, that's true too, because people do sometimes think that, like, oh, you're hiring overseas, we're, we're losing jobs in the U.S. No, we're growing here, and they can, the other people can help also. These are $3 people. an hour jobs, okay? Like the work that's being done, like if you look at my social, if you look at the other stuff we're producing, people say, well, it's really good. It's really awesome, These the stuff they're doing. Yeah, it's done by people that are making three to 10 bucks an hour. Last I checked, I'm not willing to work for three bucks an hour. Right, same, yeah. <clears throat> I hear you. What, hey, what are some stuff that's $100, you know, $1,000 an hour work. Focus on that, doing deals. That's $1,000 an hour work. Right, 100%. What are some good platforms to, if people want to hire overseas? Onlinejobs.ph. It's my favorite one, but you could also go to our group on Facebook. It's called Digital Marketing with Dennis Yu. Fiverr and Upwork are the two largest general freelancing platforms. There's freelancer.com, which is coming up. There's a lot of places you can hire people, but the beauty is that there's, there's millions of folks and you can hire them on any of these platforms. It doesn't matter what the platform is because what's most important is you have to have a clear job description. If you don't have one, you can borrow one of ours. You have to hire someone into a clear process. If you hire the most amazing VA, but you don't have a clear process, they're going to fail. If you don't know how to manage these people, they're going to fail. If you don't know how to communicate and organize, you're going to fail. Now, on your Facebook group, can people go there and hire people that are already trained? Yeah, yeah you can. And you, you can just go in there for free saying, hey, I was on the podcast with you know, Brian Driscoll and Dennis. And I want to hire a virtual assistant to rebuild my website or to do whatever, or to do the content factory. And here's, you know, and I don't have the training on the content factory, but Dennis explained what it is. So if you're qualified in the content factory, I'm looking to hire somebody. I'm a real estate investor in Seattle, Washington, you know, make a one minute video demonstrating that, you know, what I do so that I can interview the people that have actually put in the time to show that they care. Otherwise you can get hit up with hundreds of people that are not qualified. So you have to have a screening process has to tie to some kind of training. You have to make them do something that shows that they speak good English, shows that they're qualified. Otherwise, all these people will just start applying saying, hey, I'll work for you, I'll work for you. Yes, but did you get qualified? And do you understand what I do? And how good is your English? And can you follow directions? And you know, that kind of thing. That's so true too, because people just starting uh, looking at hiring overseas, you might get 300 job applications if you don't do it right. Yeah. And you, yeah, you can't even look through them. There's no question that there's an, basically an unlimited amount of labor. And, and because of that, you can hire anything. You can hire an account manager. You can hire like someone to run your business, like a COO. Who would have thought? Yeah, those people are out there because there's just so many. But if you don't have a tight process on how you screen these people, you're never going to be able to wade through. It's a needle in the haystack issue, really. We right, have training yeah. on how to hire the right people and how not to get. So when 500 people apply, you're only interviewing five or six people because they have to go through this whole thing to qualify themselves before you even look at them. Right. What, what's your website uh, URL? Blitzmetrics.com. Okay, B-L-I-T-Z-M-E-T-R-S. M-E-T-R-I-C-S dot com. Yeah. All right. Great. We'll put that in the show notes. Yeah, because we're running out of time here. Uh, well, first, I want to tell you thanks for coming on. This is great. Thank you, Brian. It's an honor. And anybody who wants to reach out, check out Dennis's website or just hit him up on LinkedIn or any of the social platforms and definitely check out the uh, Facebook group. Tell them again, how can they find the Facebook group? You go to Facebook and you search for Digital Marketing with Dennis Yu, and you as an American business owner should say something about, you know, introduce yourself in the group, say who you are and what you're looking for. Maybe even make a one minute video like we talked about, which encourages them to make one minute videos and then learn about the content factory. And the odds are, if you don't have a content factory, then you're going to need someone who can do all this, who's trained in our systems and whatnot. And they'll cost you $3 an hour, which is $500 a month working for you full time. You pay them directly. You don't pay us anything. That's solid, man. Hey, well, and I then appreciate I'll be very happy because you're creating another job. Hey, well, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. And hey, everyone, thanks for listening. Uh, until next time, get out there, crush it, close some deals. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks, Brian. Talk soon. Mm -hmm.